Muito bem-vindos. Welcome a mais uma transmissão do Instituto Vida para Todos. To a transmission of the Life for All Institute. De João, palavra, vida, the general theme is the Gospel of John, Word, Life and Edification. Message number 14. Novo mandamento. A new commandment. Uns aos outros. Love one another. João, 13, the biblical lecture is John um chapter 13. Verses from 1 until 38. So, after the last message, we have been doing a summary of everything that happened in the life and the work of the Lord Jesus here on earth, including the prophecy about Isaiah 53, about his death and resurrection and his ascension, nós fizemos também uma retrospectiva so we also did a summary Jesus operava, of the way how Jesus operated Deus, being the same one by God. He palavra, did not speak his own word, palavra, but pai, he spoke the word that the, falava, the, of his master, pai, the word of the, that, that his Lord sent him and who, who believe in the word, it remains on him and does his word. And that's how he's, he led us the motto, the pardon, to bring back until the end of times. And until the end of times, we will, we will need to follow this motto, to honor who, who God sent, and to hear his word because the word of the prophet chosen by God is the own word of God. It's the word of God that does the work of God. So the enemy of God wanted to get, put confusion in, in men's mind, always questioning about the chosen channel of God. That's happening since the Old Testament for those chosen by God. They, they confronted this opposition and also this thought of those who were chosen to be the voice of the Lord. There's always been this questioning. That's why, brothers, that's an obstacle for the Lord to do His will here on earth. But now in the end times, God chose a little flock. God chose the church in Philadelphia, the church that has little strength, but it's a church that loves the word. It's a church that do not denies the name of the Lord and does not substitute the Lord for, it, for its capacity, but it's a church that trusts in the power of the word to do the work. Do not trust in, in its own capacity. So finally, brothers, the Lord found an environment between us to move forward. And so after, after all the op opposition from the part of the Jews, the leadership of the Jews, they do not understand why he came. Finally, the Lord, he went out to search Uh, of his sheep. And brothers, here I'm going directly because we have a lot to talk today. So, chapter 13, verse 1, it says, Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world. He loved them to the end. Brothers, before the Passover, Jesus, he, he was conscious. He had the conscience that this was the last feast of Passover. This means that he will be sacrificed in this Passover as the lamb. And so he knew that, that his hour had come that to depart from this world to the Father. But it's interesting that he says, having loved his own. 
who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Who are those of his own? Are those who the Lord already chose to live the, the, church, the, the church in, in, in Bethany, representing those who, those who he loved, that they were on the they were on the world he loved them to the end what a word what a word of of love he, he who suffers so much opposition uh, persecution but finally a little bit before he went to the cross he found his church and he loved them and if he loved them he's going to love Till the end, Você faz parte desses. you are part of those. Mãos, eu creio que Brothers, I believe deles. that the Lord called us to be o part Senhor of those. The Lord loved us and he will love us until the end. João, 13, John chapter 13, it, it ends with the first part of the Gospel of John. Brothers, and I did not plan this. This conference, God made it so this last message it will end in John 13. Because the 13 first chapters of the Gospel of John, their part of a of a block of a part this part it reveals that God he sent his son to introduce the uh, God himself as eternal life to men and this first part he wants to introduce eternal life eternal life to men. That's why he sent his son to introduce God himself as eternal life. God, he wants to give eternal life to men. And he sent his own son as the word so he can as, as the word so he, he can introduce God himself as eternal life to men. So John chapter 3 verse 16, a very well-known verse by everyone, it expresses the, the filling of the first section of John. So you already know, you already know it. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And the everlasting life, it's God himself. God wants to introduce himself into men as eternal life, everlasting life. That's why it was necessary that the that his son it will become flesh and even died for us to rescue us to redeem us and so god wants to live eternal life to men but i already explained a lot of times life is something mysterious life is something abstract life it's something Hardly to explain. That's why God sent His only begotten Son as the Word. In the beginning, it was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. But one day, that same Word, it became flesh. And habited between us, among us, full with grace and truth. And now it's more concrete that to receive life, we need to receive the word. Isn't it? And thanks to God, Christ is the word. So it's even easier for us to receive everlasting life, hearing the word and believing and receiving the word. 
Meanwhile, it's not that easy. Because every man chosen by God brings a lot of questions by, by men, isn't it? To receive the word of God, the word that contains everlasting life, men needed to believe that Christ was the sent one by God. So that's the problem. The, 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 the leadership of the Jews, they were not able to believe that Christ was the sent one by God. And it was the Christ. It was the Messiah. Isn't it? And so, all the work, right? All the work that he did, the word that Christ prophesied, it, was, it wasn't men's, but it was of the, of the Father himself who was within him. And that word that has an origin in the, in the Father, it was the one that did the work of God. So we we already read this in the in the morning. I'm gonna read it again. John chapter five verse thirty five. Mas eu tenho maior testemunho do que o de João, porque as obras but I have a greater witness than John's, for the works which the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I do, bear witness of me, that the Father has sent me. Chapter 6, verse 29. Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate of the of the loaves. And how, how, how is the work of God being done? Believing in the word of the sent one. Believing in the word of the prophet. Believing in the prophetic word. So John 14, verse 10. I'm sorry. John 14, verse 10. You do not believe that I am in the Father. And the Father in me, the words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Jesus, he never said a word for himself. But the Father that it's in him does it, does his works. So the word that Jesus spoke, it wasn't, a, it wasn't, from himself but who was the one speaking it was god it was the father himself it was the word of the father being spoken by him that realized realizes the the work of god so that's why the verse 11 says believe me that i'm in the father and the father in me or else believe me for the sake of the works th themselves. So you have, if you have some difficulties of believing in the, in the prophet, if you have it, you have difficulties in believing in men, you have questions, believing in the man in the channel that, the God, that God chose. Believe for the sake of the works themselves that are being done, right? If you're not able to believe in men, then believe in the words, the works that God is doing through the word. That's why, brothers, the works that Jesus did, the signs, the miracles, they were a confirmation of God that he was the prophet sent from his part to give everlasting life to men and realize his... That was the intention of the first section of the Gospel of John. But sadly, the people of Israel, they did not receive Jesus. That's the part of the leadership. That's why there were those who received him and they were treated by the Lord as those who are his own. That's why I'm going to read it again. Having he, Having loved his own, because those 
they received the word and they believed in the word. And those are the sheep that knows the Lord, the, the voice of the Lord. And they recognize the voice and they followed him. Are you part of this? Have you recognized the voice of the Lord? Have you heard the voice of the Lord? So after you heard the voice, have you followed the Lord? And so you are part of those. Jesus said, here it says, in relation of Jesus, having loved his own, are you part of his own? Of the, of the others? Having loved his own, who were in the world, you're still in the world. He loved them until the end. So he will keep us until the end. So now, the second section of the Gospel of John, it goes from chapter 14 until the end of the Gospel of John, which is chapter 21. So this second section, it reveals that after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, he will come as as a spirit for what to introduce man in god so in the first section christ came as word to introduce god into man as ever everlasting life and in the second section christ will have to die resurrect become the spirit to take man to god That's why he says, so, so for what? So this man who's introducing God can be built up, can be edified, man and God, together in one common place. That's Ephesians 2.22, the pla dwelling place of God in the Spirit, which is the tabernacle of God, which is in... Revelations 21, verse 3. You can look at it. That's the final result of the will of God. Is Revelation chapter 21, verse 3. It says, And I heard a loud voice from heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. Brothers, God did not choose to to dwell with with the with others but he chose to dwell with men are you a man so he will dwell with men that's the tabernacle of god with men god would dwell with them and they shall be his people and god himself will be with them and be their god the, this last phrase There's a really good version of it, which is the version of Jerusalem in Portuguese that it says, and he, referring to God, and he, then it comes, a composed name with God, which is God with them, and God, God with them, God with them is a composed name. It's not just God, but it's God with them. It's a composed name of God. So God with them, and he, God, God with them will be their God. So our God, brothers, for eternity, it will be God with men. Why? Because there's no way to separate it anymore because we, him and us will become one. So how the Father, that's how the Father and Son are one, we will be introduced in this unity. Isn't it wonderful, brothers? That's the second section of the Gospel of John that we will be seeing from next week. So let's go back to John 13. That's why, brothers, to just end the first section, Jesus, he needed to, to accomplish the hardest part as a man, which is his crucifixion. It was the hardest part. And it was, this was his last feast of Passover, and he himself will be offered as the 
Passover lamb. So let's go to verse 2 of, of John chapter 13. Durante a ceia, and supper being ended, the devil having already put, in to, put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. So during the supper, it means that he was in an environment of, of dinner, of supper. And during the dinner, Judah, he was shown as the one who was, who was going to trade Jesus. So this, this, So I already mentioned a lot of times, but I'm going to show you again. John 6, chapter 6 to 4. John 6, chapter 6, verse 64. But there are some of you who do not believe, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were. They were who do not believe and would betray him. So Jesus already knew. In verse 670, Jesus answered them, Did I not chose you the twelve, and one of you is a devil? So Jesus, he did not say the, he did not choose words. He said, you are, one of you are the devil. He spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it was he who would betray him, being one of the twelve. So, brothers, in this case of, of Mary anointing the, the feet of Jesus, which is in Matthew, Matthew chapter 12, when Mary did something exaggerated in Judas' eyes, breaking the perfume for God, for Jesus, and putting it, putting it in Jesus' feet, And so Judah, he thought it was it was something wasted. So John 12, chapter 6, chapter 4, But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who will betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box. So John also did not, did not choose words because he was a thief and had the money box and he used to take what was put in it. So that means that Judah, he was, it was not for him exaggerated because of the poor people. Because worrying or caring for poor people, but he was worried worried about his own pocket. So he didn't have any worries about Jesus. So this example, you saw that John, he put it in here. He registered because uh, very very passages uh, because uh, uh, of Judah because he put it here because he wanted to give us and alert if there's any problem of the heart in every uh, each one of us if we do not remain on the light of the word to be cleaned if you have still problems in the heart before all the light of the word that is coming to us and we do not take advantage to clean our hearts insatisfaction, ambition, and personal interest in the work of God will result as, as betrayed. If you do not tra treat it, you will still have personal interests because you will take the, the work of the Lord to uh, get your own objective. So that's one day you will become a traitor. That's why, brothers, we need to clean our hearts. There's nothing 
there's nothing worse than, than betray. He took advantage of the work of the Lord to get his objective because He, he wasn't known, but because of Jesus and because of the signs that Jesus did and the Pharisees and the scribes, they wanted to kill Jesus, so he took advantage and they, he did a, a bed with them. It's, the, it's the, hor the most horrible thing that is six. So who takes advantage of the work of God to, to reach their personal objective That's totally contrary of the objective of God, that this will be taken as a traitor. So, verse 3. Chapter 13, verse 3. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God. Right? So, The Father, he trusted everything into Jesus' hands. He came here to earth. God trusted him everything, everything that he needed to do here on earth. Because everything that he did, he was being one with the Father. He did nothing apart from, from the Father. Everything that he spoke, it was, the, it was from, from the Father. That's why he was a man that you could trust that God could trust. So now, he came from God, he was going back to God. So just take advantage to take to talk a little bit about, you know, going and, and coming. You know, probably next week will be something clear, but uh, on John chapter 14, verse 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And it says, if it were not so. So Jesus needed to go. What does mean to Jesus go? It means the death of Jesus. It means he will go there because of his death. If he, if he, if he were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And so I, I'll go. It was necessary for Jesus to go to the Father. He came from the Father. It was now time for him to, to go. So it was necessary for him to die. So here he goes to the Father to prepare a place for us to take us to the Father. So he went because of, through death, and God resurrected him, and through resurrection, he came as, as a spirit. He went and he came back. And, the, and now that he came back, he, get, he has the, the capacity of the spirit to dwell in us, to all of those who believe. And today he's within us. He's within us, and He took us to the Father. You and me, we are in the Father through the Spirit of Jesus. So as Jesus, He was in the Father, we today are also in the Father. We are in God, Lord Jesus. So verse... That's why, brothers, I read in the last message, Isaiah 53, verse 1, that says that Christ, it was on Isaiah 53, 1, it says that Christ is the arm of the Lord. It's the one that executes is the one that operates the will of God here on earth, but his work is not done yet. Today, he generated the church. And right now, we are giving a continuation to the work of God 
And that work of God is today with the church. But He did not leave us alone. He is with us. He is still, He continues to do God's will through us. So chapter 5 of John, verse 22 says, For the Father judge no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. So, brothers, if God trusted all to Jesus in the execution of the will of God, it's, it's because he has this responsibility. If he has this responsibility, whoever honors him honors the Father. So that's why, brothers, we must honor the, the Son to honor the Father who sent him. Okay? So, chapter 3 of John, verse 31, it says, He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth is early and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. all. Why Jesus came here to earth? He spoke so excellent words that Nicodemus will tell, tell him, but I'm older than you, I have more experience than you, but I'm not able to do all of the things that you do. Why? Because God, because Jesus came from above. He came from heaven. And so he came from above, and so he speaks what he has seen and heard but known accept his testimony. And so John chapter 8 Verse 23, it says, 823. And he said to them, You are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. That's why, brothers, he, he, he came from God. Jesus came from God. He is not from this world. He is the verb, the word that became flesh. So that's why he came from above. He, he talks about what he has seen and heard above. That's why his word is different because it's an eternal word. And so after, every, after the work that he did here on earth as a man, he will return to God. So he's finishing his, his work. His part, his early part of the work of the Lord, which God gave him to, to accomplish. So he was already in the end. So after he's dead, he, God resurrected him and will make him to go, he, to, go to heaven and sit in the right, in the right of God. So you can see Acts chapter 2, verse 32. This Jesus, God, has raised him up, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out these which you know, you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he says himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies for footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God has made this Jesus who you crucified, both Lord and Christ. So he came from the Father, and now he's accomplishing all of his mission here on earth. Dying on the cross for us, he will go back to the Father through his crucifixion. Lord Jesus. So now we're going to continue. 
So in John 13, John 13, verse 4. No meio da ceia, no meio do banquete, levantou-se da ceia, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. So Jesus, in his last supper, his last dinner, with the with the disciples, certainly he he was saying. They, they all knew that he was about to, to die. It was, and Jesus certainly, he was the most important person of this supper. He was the protagonist of this supper. And so Jesus, he did something amazing. He was supposed to be the one more honored from this supper. But Jesus suddenly, he rose up, he took all of his garments, took a towel and girded himself. So, a noble, a host, a protagonist, the most important person of the supper will be certainly well-dressed and well-served. But Jesus, before he went, he wanted to give an example for us. So what did he do? He rose up, he took his garments, he took a towel and girded him himself. What would he do that? Is someone who's serving, isn't it? So Jesus, who was the most important person of this supper, he took his clothes, his garments, he took a towel and girded himself as a servant. And he was taking the, the, the part of a servant. So after that, he, pour, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel which, with which he was girded. It was a surprise. So then he went to wash the disciples' feet, to wipe them with the towel. And so he's totally a servant. He's a ser servant. He was just there washing the disciples' feet, and they were surprised. But then, when he came to si Simon Peter, and then Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I'm doing, you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Always scandalous. Oh Lord Jesus, so be before he went to death, Jesus wanted to do something to live as, a, as an example to his disciples. And so he went to wash the disciples' feet in a supper. Certainly, Jesus will be the principal character of the supper, but they all knew that he was going to be to, to die. But as for the surprise of everyone, he rose up and he took his garments so he could go in the position in the position of in the position from a honor person to a person that serves a servant so in a normal situation situation man will look position of of the greater honor those who can sit 
in the in the, in the most honored places, they will have respect. But here, the closer to Jesus you are, more more honor you have. But to Jesus, it was the le the, the, the contrary. Be besides looking for more honor, the, he 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 went to serve to wash the disciples' feet. So, brothers, that's why Peter, when he saw this situation, and it was him, right? He was really scandalous. He realized that he it was a lesson for him. And even in his epistle, he talks about this a little bit. If It was First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. First Peter, versículo 5. Rogo igualmente aos jovens, sede submissos. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Brothers, I take advantage to say, we are encouraging the the younger people to be included in the work of the Lord. The teenagers as our troops and the younger people as captains of troops. You are being so useful in the work of the Lord, but I still I want you to be more useful for you to learn to do the work of the Lord is for you to have more maturity. In every church, you will be those who truly help the brothers who, brothers who are in front of you to take the Lord of the Lord forward. But never let your pride talk louder never seek places of honor never in your heart seek position brothers i know a lot of men who have the heart of seeking honor by by themselves and and the spotlight and they betray it and they and they fall in the deceivement of the devil and they went into the devil's path which is pride Brothers, let us be humble. Let us be submissive who are, for those who are older. Even sometimes you say, oh, he's right, I'm wrong. Brothers, that lesson, it could bring life. That's why, brothers, let us always be submissive to the oldest. But now for ev for everyone else, yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. Brothers, let us not seek position of honor. Let us not be running. You know, I know, I know brothers that they lack the, the honor places. Wherever there's where's the best place he wants to be there. Those who are always seeking position, always seeking spotlight. Brothers, God resists the proud. Here it says, because God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. God will give you grace. If you always keep the position of being humble, God will always give you grace. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. So today in the afternoon, I, I talk about one testimony that I had. It was a situation, I was humiliated, but Thanks to the Lord, I didn't have the minimum problem with this. I was submitted to the situation. And I know that if the Lord made me pass through that situation because I needed to go through the situation, I was peaceful, I was calm. But in the right moment, the Lord, God, He exalts us. You do not need to worry about doing justice and righteousness with your own hands. I'm going to read it again. 
So therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant. Do not let the enemy catch you through, through being proud by ambition. Don't let him. So the devil, the adversary, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he might devour. Do not give him food. Humility makes him to be starving. Amen. So the, the supper impacted the Peter uh, as he asked the Lord, Are you washing my feet? You will not understand what this is now, but you will after. And then Peter said, You shall never wash my feet. Then Jesus answered, If you do not wash me, wash you, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. But then Jesus said in verse 10, Jesus said to him, He who is batted needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And if you are clean, but not all of you. If you already took a bath, already, you don't need to, to, to take a bath again, but only your feet. You know, it was a it was a tradition because the feet with sandals they get dirty. But if you already took bath, you're already clean. But like, how can you be clean? You already took uh, your your bath. I'm not referring if you already took a bath before the meeting. But are you already clean? You already took the bath. Brothers. You, you know how to you get clean. So John chapter 15, verse 3. Remember, remember that John 15, John 15, the traitor, he was not there anymore. He was only the 11. So on John 15, verse 3 it says, you are already clean. Because of the word which I have spoken to you. The word that Jesus speaks, it cleans us. The word, the prophetic word, cleans us. You are already clean. So here it says, you are already clean but not all of you. Why not all of you? So verse 11 of cha uh, chapter 13, it says, for he, for he already knew who betrayed him. Therefore he said, you are not all clean. Why did Judah was not clean? Why didn't he have any appreciation for Jesus' word? He was all time dirty. He was thinking about other things of stealing money. He was, he, he didn't care about the words of the Lord. So what about us? Are, are we clean? Ephesians 5. So Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. It says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. As Christ loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. By the word. So Jesus, he loved the church and he died for the church and he gave himself for the church. For what? So 
so he can he might sanctify and Christ is sanctifying us today having cleaned us by the washing of water by the word so the word is cleaning us the word is cleaning us today so that's why when you do immersion in the word when you inculcate the word in your heart when you speak one to another the word so the word is washing us today the word is cleaning us today the word is sanctifying us today what's the objective of presenting the object is presenting that he might present her to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but holy without blemish the Lord is doing this work with us so brothers are you clean if you are the one who loves the word of the Lord who does immersion in the word believe that the word can clean you can wash you can bring reality of Christ to you brothers you are being clean the whole time oh Lord Jesus so let's continue on John 13 verse 12 so when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to, to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. I am the teacher, I am the Lord. But if I then, your Lord, your teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. If Jesus he humiliated his, himself to wash the disciples' feet, but he was the, te the teacher, he was the Lord, what about us? What will be our attitude? Of course, in an example of in certain way, the example is something that impacts, but we also need to do the same thing to wash the feet of another one. Will you humble yourself and wash another one's feet? The, uh, your brother's feet? Lord Jesus. For I have given you an example. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who sent a greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Oh, Lord Jesus. I do not say about all of you because I know those who you chose. But that the scripture may be fulfilled, he who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe that I am he. What, what does he want to say? He wants to say that he continues to be accommodated, not comfortable with the traitor. So he's clear that here he says. Verse 18, I do not speak concerning all of you. I know whom I have chosen. So, between all of those 12, actually not all of them he chose. He chose who? He chose the 11. But the number 12, it was just in the, in the midst of them. So, how many times, how much time there was people that they were in, in the midst of us. But Jesus, he knows who he chose. Jesus, he knows who are those who are his sheep, sheep, who are those that the Father brought to him, that he would take. It's not all of them. 
is not all of the the, the believers. Because that's why it's important for, for us to do the will of God. And in John 7, it's clear for him, not all of those who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of God who is in heaven. It's The important is to do the will of the Father. Those were chosen by the Lord. You want to be part of them? That's why, brothers, do the will of God. Why? Because there's... Because there's one that's taking advantage and he's using this fame to gain money. Isn't it? So now I tell you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe in the I am. So Jesus is uncomfortable. Must now I tell you before it comes. So Jesus was already saying a lot of times. So before it comes, that disciples, they, they will believe that he is the I am. He knows everything. He is the true one. He is the existence itself. All Jesus, most assuredly I say to you, he who receives whoever I send receives me, and he who sent and he who receives me receives him who sent him. When you go to the streets, may I pray for you? All of those who receive you is receiving the Lord himself. Isn't it? The one that receives, that I send, he receives me. And the one that receives me receives the one that sent me. So whoever receives you receives the Lord. And who receives the Lord receives God, is, God himself. Look how important we are. A cold porter in the streets, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. A teenager in the streets, may I pray for you. Oh Lord Jesus, we are those who were sent by the Lord. We are doing these things in the name of the Lord. Who receives us, receives the Lord, and receives God himself. Amen. When Jesus had said these things, he was traveled in spirit and testified and said, Most assuredly, I said to you, one of you will betray me. Brothers, you realize that this uh, traveled his spirit. He was uncomfortable and he said it again. And so then the disciples look at one another, perplexed about whom he spoke. Now, there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask who it was of whom he spoke. Ask, 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 who is talking about? Who's the traitor? Who's the traitor? Ask. Then, leaning back on Jesus' breast, we hear that this disciple is John. He said to them, Lord, who is it? But he asked in private, not in public. Jesus answered, Is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it? And having it dipped the bread, he gave it to Judah Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now after the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Jesus called him devil. John called him thief. And now entered in him Satan. Then Jesus said to him, What do you do? Do quickly. Go, do it. But no one at the table knew for what reason he said this to him. For some thought, because Judas had the money box that Jesus has said to him, buy those things we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. 
having received Judah, having received the piece of bread, he went out immediately and it was night. It's interesting. He went out immediately and it was night. He went out of the presence of the light of the world to the night. So brothers, I just want to say the next thing. One of us, one of you will betray me. One of you who eat of my bread and follow closely Jesus, he saw how Jesus act. He heard every word of Jesus. He saw the heart of Jesus, but nothing of all of this was able to make his path right again. It's so sad. But thanks to the Lord, we have the example of Timothy. Timothy, he also followed closely. Who? The Apostle Paul. Second Timothy, verse 3. How does it say? You can open it. Second Timothy, verse 3. Chapter 3, verse 10. But you, but you, Timothy, have carefully followed my doctrine. Have you followed closely the word, the prophetic word? I know that the teenagers, they do not lose any of it. The live on Thursday, the live of Pack on Saturday, and the prophetic word on, on Sunday night. They do not lose it. And they also do a transcription, and they write, and they ruminate. I don't know if the adults are doing it, too. Sometimes in the live of Thursday, we see that there's 300 points. 300 are seeing it and we are many here probably not of all are following closely but i know that the teenagers they are let's follow closely let's stay close or if you're working or doing something but after you can hear it so brothers let's follow closely as timothy he followed closely every word of paul but he did not just follow the doctrine he also followed the manner of life how can how, how paul he would proceed in different situations something good happening an affliction a conflict how did paul proceed timothy he followed what was the purpose of the heart of his heart what was the purpose? He didn't have ambition. He didn't have, he was not fighting for position or he was not looking fame or popularity. Timothy really knew that the purpose of Paul's heart was pure. But he also knew his faith. Even sometimes when the situation was dark, difficult, a lot of problems and it seemed like the church was going to disappear in this situation but Paul he had faith Paul he trusted that God could do something and he knew the long suffering of Paul the patience where waiting the that people could, could grow, the brothers of the church could grow. He knew the love that Paul had. He knew the perseverance that Paul had. He knew all of the persecutions, and also he knew all of the afflictions. Brothers, all of the 12 apostles, disciples of the Lord, they follow him close. But one of them, they, he not, did not took advantage of this. He traded he betrayed Jesus. That's that, that that's why that's something that brought brought pain to Jesus' heart. He who had ate of my bread now it's against me. 
Oh Lord Jesus, that's why, brothers, in this semester, we're going to follow closely the Lord. So a lot of brothers, they already did the subscription to a lot of conferences. So let's go after the word. If it's possible, let's be in all of the conferences, all of the lives, all of the prophetic word, so you can follow closely, doing it like the teenagers. Grind down, do immersion, do transcription, and you'll see the benefit that it brings. That's why, brothers, it's interesting. Let's go back there on John 13. It's interesting. That this betrayal, it was so evident, but the disciples, they didn't know. They had no way of knowing who was the traitor, and it's not possible. So Judah, he knew how to, how to fake it. Oh, there was lack of discernment of the other 11. It's impossible because there's you're not able to hide it at all times. For example, Mary, she she broke the perfume, the oil perfume, and Judah said, oh, that's a waste. The disciples, they should have had some discernment, but unfortunately they didn't. And, and when he ate that bread, Satan entered in Judah. And no one realized this. But even with this, they did not they realize. But brothers, that's why we need to be simple as the dove, but also have some being prudent as, as the snake. Sometimes you cannot just be silly. You cannot... Let, let us have discernment. You, you, you need to notice there's something wrong here. You need to discern. Because probably what's going on, it could hurt a lot of people. That's why we need discernment. And here it says, where am I? On verse 29, it says, for some thought, because Judas had the money box. I already read this, right? So now, on um, 31. So, now, Jesus finally got to what he wanted to say. Why did he wash his disciples' feet? He gave an example of humility, of being humble, of us humiliate ourselves. But this example of being humble even in ourselves, it doesn't have, in, in himself, doesn't have a lot of meaning. But the real prin principle, uh, it's to love one another. You, you realize, brothers, if, if the Lord stopped only on washing the disciples' feet, it will be just sadly like in religion is practice. Just wash, wash your feet, wash your feet, and you forget that after this, it comes the Lord talking about the new commandment. So washing feet is not just to become a ritual or washing feet is for us to humiliate ourselves and to love one another. I don't know if the brothers realized. So verse 31. So when he had gone out, Jesus said, now, the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and glorify him immediately. What is this? Do you understand any of this? So, when the traitor... He went away. The Son of Man was glorified. And God is also glorified in Him, in Christ. And if God is glorified in Him, in Christ, God will also glorify Him 
in himself. This will happen in short, shortly, which is in his dead and resurrection. I don't know if you understand. I'm going to say it again. When Judah went out, the Son of Man was glorified. And God was glorified in him. And if God is glorified with Christ, God will also glorify Christ. In God himself. And this will happen in short notice because it says immediately. It seems it will happen right after. So this right after, immediately, it's when? It's he in his death and resurrection. So God will glorify Christ. So after this, it says, little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So now I say to you, so Jesus is interesting because Jesus, Jesus is using these little children. So now when John and his apostles, he says, little children, brothers, Jesus used little children. Tech none, that means little kid is a really um, loving word to to he used with this other uh, 11 so after the traitor went out he's calling little children you are my little children you are my loved ones you are mine the ones that i love and i will love until the end look what a privilege for us to be those who little children of the Lord. That's why it was a short notice that he will no, because he will go but from death to resurrection. Only Christ, only Jesus can do it. Neither me or you, we have power to do redemption, but only Christ can do it. That's why we cannot go without him. That's why when he went, he came as the spirit and he wants us to have the reality of the church life, which is the next verse. What is the reality? It says, verse 20, uh, 34, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another by these all will know that you are my disciples if you have loved for one another oh Lord Jesus what I what the Lord wants for the church is not just so much work that we're going to do, but He wants to produce a fabric of love between us. Meanwhile, we're going out together to do immersion, to inculcate the word in our hearts. We talk one to another. We go out to preach the gospel, preach the gospel of the kingdom. We serve together in the net of care. We are living the church life together. This is producing something for God. What is this producing for God? Is the fabric of love. But you will say, oh, I, I'm not able to love. I'm not able to have so much love. I said with this brother, I said with this sister, the brothers put me with this sister, and it's exactly this sister that I, ca I said I cannot serve with her. And this brother, he's so weird. I do not have this love for the brothers. But brothers, it's not your love. Your lo love. This love comes from the love of God. And the love of God, where's the love of God? It comes from where? 
comes from the Word. The Word brings Christ, and Christ is God, and God And, and the love of God comes at all times once we do immersion and could get the word in our hearts. You do not realize, but the word, the love of God is entering you, entering you as reality. Christ is filling you with the reality and love of God. And without realizing, you start to love those who you couldn't love. Have you had this experience? Oh, Lord Jesus, if we weren't in that direction, we're not doing it well. We have to go to this direction. To inculcate the word, to do immersion in the word, isn't it? Filled with the word of the Lord. This has to be, we, ha we will have to be receiving the love of God as the weft. The line that comes from God is the love that comes as rap. And that gives us the, the love, the uh, brotherly love. This love fills us with the love of God that it makes us to have brotherly love between us. And us, brother, we will pass to have this brotherly love as horizontal lines. We have the love of God, which is warp, and the love with our brothers, which is weft. And brothers, we are interwined in the love of God. We are interwined with the love of God, one line to another. And these interwined will produce the edified of the church, the edification of the church. It will produce a fabric of love. So the love of God has the power to unite us, to get us together. The love of God has the power of uniting us, bond us, bond you to another one. In Colossians chapter 3, O Lord Jesus, Colossians chapter 3, verse 14, or verse 13, it says, Bearing with one another and forgiving one another if anyone has a complaint against another. Even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. So he's the one that bonds us perfectly. There's this version of a Bible in Portuguese, which is love is what unites us in perfection. Love is the only element that unites us, that connects us, that sticks us together, is the love of God. So brothers, the more we receive the word, the more we receive the reality of the love of God, we're able to get, to be bonded with, The brothers were able to be connected. And not only this, but we are interwined, interlaced. We will get to a time that this will be so real between us that we will not realize that we are so, so, so connected that we're not able to get away from the other. Do you believe in this? Or am I saying something silly? Lord Jesus. So John, John chapter 13, New Commandment, I say to you, to love one another. So this, if you have love, verse 35, by this, Is it agape love, which is the love of God? So God gives us the love 
to supply our love so we can love the, the brothers. If he does not give us the supply of love, we cannot be able to love the brothers. But he gives us this love. And how do we get this love? I'm going to repeat, it's with the word. That's why, brothers, verse, it's Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through the faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. It means that when you allowed Christ, to dwell in your in you to dwell in you how you're able to do this it's through you doing immersion in the word to inculcate the word to receive the word as you allow christ to dwell in your heart not only in your spirit but your soul what happens the love it starts to come as a base for the construction of God, what, what God wants, which is the edification of the church. So, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to com comprehend with all the saints that what is the width and length and depth of height to know the love of Christ. You're able to to know the, the measure of this, comprehend the, this universe, not this physical universe. But here it means the universe of God. It's to know the universe of eternity. So brothers, with all the saints, with Christ dwelling in our hearts, having the vase being rooted in love, we're going to be able to understand the dimension of God and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. So our mind is not able but God is putting this in uh, in uh, inside of us, which passes knowledge that, what's the objective of this? That you may be filled, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. God wants to fill us and fill you and fill you. God wants to fill you. And God is what? God is love. So when God fills you, you will be filled and full with love. And what's the most perfect thing? So let's see in First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. Love never fails, but wherever there are prophecies, they will fail. Where, whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will be vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. It means that all of these, everything that we live, is still not the fullness of that dim the spiritual dimension. Everything that we enjoy, when even we are enjoying something wonderful, is still a part. But when that which is perfect has come, what is perfect? It's love. Love, it's perfect. Then that which is in part will be done away. So brothers, believe when all of this ends and we go to the dimension of God, you will realize, I already said this, it's hard for you to explain in our dimension in the mention of God, you will feel like you never felt being so loved. Because when all of this ends, we will be immersed in God. It's like if you dive in in a pool of love. Have you thought about it? You are in the pool of love. You are immersed in love, full with love, embraced by love. All are Jesus. Because you will be in God and God is love. So let's use this love to love one another. And we will be together. We will be... We will not be broken. There's no way for you to say, I don't love the brothers. No, you will be together with this brother. You will be fatally bonded so chapter 4 of Ephesians 
15 and 16. Em amor, a é a seguindo a verdade, em amor. That we uh, 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow in all things into him which is who is the head Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together. This word knit together is interwined. Here it talks about this fabric of love. So it says, joined and not knit together by what every joint supplies according to what every joint supplies. So all of us are going to work according to the effective working by each er by which every part does its share, Gro causes growth, growth in the body and edifying of itself in love. We want to live this reality. It's for you. It's now for you to prepare since now. Washing the disciples' feet, it was a preparation for the environment of love that God wants to give to us. That's why, brothers, so each one of us let's clothe ourselves with the position of him of being humble and sincerity in our hearts. Are you ready to be clothed? To take your garments, your position, your honor, and be clothed with humility. That should be the environment of us. So our environment is going to be, as it says in, in Philippians, There's no way for us to think in the other thing. So complete my joy that you have the same love, you're united in soul, having the same feeling. Do nothing for glory. In the King James, in Portuguese, it says, do nothing for vanity. We are not rivals of anyone. Do not be competing with another brother. Do not do of your service a competition with another service. No, we are not here rivals. We are in the body of Christ. We are members one, one of, of another, doing everything in unity, considering the other better than you. Do not think you're the best in the world, but look, let, let each of you look not only for our own interests, but also for the interests of others. So let's practice. Let's take this position of washing our brother's feet. Let's love one another by the supplying of the word, by the word of God, we're able to love one another. Amen. Hallelujah. Só não saio rapidinho, a gente vai projetar um vídeo aqui para vocês, tá bem especial. Espero